All right. Welcome, everyone. We are live. Uh, I am Anthony Carter, your host for this evening. This is the finished product of our pen painting. Uh, we took uh, random pens. We have ink, regular ink, jelly roll, ballpoint pens, you name it, everything. Any kind of pen that has an inkwell inside like this, we, you, we can use for paint. So we took our brushes, we took our fingers, and we smudged all of our ink. We brushed on different colors of ink. And uh, in the end, we made a little portrait, a uh, little landscape. So, and you can see it is framed very nicely. And this frame is only a dollar or two at the dollar store. So everything we'll be doing here and these quarantine art lessons will be with everyday household materials and uh, recyclable items, upcycled items. And uh, you know, hopefully you have some paint laying around. If not, I suggest you order some because we will be using paint later on as well. But for now, we're using kind of unorthodox materials like our pens. We have tape, different colored tape from the dollar store. We have our food coloring, which we'll talk about later, and uh, some other items as well. So we have a video featuring uh, our guest teacher and artist, uh, Ilana Perez. She'll be showing you how to make a beautiful bird feeder slash bird house out of recyclable materials. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll be popping that up right now. All right. Get ready. Hey guys, it's Lana here, and today I'll be showing you how to make a birdhouse with upcycled household items. So you're gonna need some tissue paper, some plastic bottles, uh, a container with some water, uh, foil paper pre-cut into circles, glue, food coloring, scissors, yarn, an X-Acto knife, and a Sharpie. Okay, so here I'm cutting a rectangular shape out into my bottle. You don't have to use a rectangular shape. You can use a circle or whatever shape you like. Here, I'm using my X-Acto knife to have an even cut on my bottle. You can go ahead and cut those shapes out with your scissor at the end. Then you can go ahead and take your foil paper, uh, which I've already pre-cut mine with the top of the bottle uh, that I used to measure it. You can place this on top of the bottle and go ahead and take extra foil paper to reinforce the roof. You don't have to make a circle shape. You can make any shape you'd like and you can use the foil uh, once you've gotten it thicker to kind of mold out the shapes that you'd like. Here I'm just kind of squishing the ends together to create a stronger hold. As we go, we'll place tissue paper over it so that way it will be secured. You can stack it until you feel that it's secure. It doesn't necessarily have to be uh, a certain amount of layers. Once you've done that, you can go ahead and use your glue and your water to prepare for your mixture. I'm pre-cutting tissue paper that I've used before, and I find that these tissues worked well. Here I'm mixing one parts glue to one parts water, and I'm also using a red glitter glue to create a color effect on my glue mixture that I'm going to use to dunk my tissue paper in and create a paper mache. You have to mix it really well. If it's too watery, just go ahead and add a little bit more glue. Here I am using my paintbrush to evenly spread a thin layer of my mixture onto the bottle to start molding my roof. This will help it stick better. 
here I'm using tissue paper just to get a kind of layout ready for my paper mache. I'm using my paintbrush to dab on the glue evenly. You can also dunk your tissue paper. I'm using my fingers to kind of tuck the ends underneath the bottom so that once I dry, I could have a clean finish. You can go ahead and repeat the process until your roof is completely covered with your tissue and glue mixture. And you can keep adding layers to make it a stronger hold. Here, I'm just squishing the bottom in so that I can start having some texture to also place the tissue paper on the underside of the roof and in the crevices of the bottle and the roof. Be sure to cover this well because that will be what gives you a nice strong hold once everything is dry. Once you've covered the entire roof, you can go ahead and flip the bottle to start working on the underside of the roof. As I said before, it's very important to cover the crevices between the foil paper and the bottle as this will give it hold and kind of glue it together once it's all dried. I'm just soaking my tissue paper here uh, so that I can get a nice saturated amount of my mixture onto it. And I'm carefully placing these tissue papers into the crevices of the foil and the bottle. Now I'm using a larger sheet to cover the entire bottle. You can use a paintbrush to smooth out the paper if you don't like the creases that are made. If you like the texture, you can just leave it. Here I'm going to use some of my food coloring to color the water a little bit of yellow. This will give my tissue paper a nice little hue. I'm going for an outdoor floral whimsical feel with my birdhouse. You can choose any color you'd like. I'm using my paper to smooth out the tissue just to get rid of some of those wrinkles. And then I'm going to go ahead and also take that part off that's covering the entrance once again. Don't forget to do that or you won't have an entrance once you're done. You can use your paintbrush to kind of get the tissue paper deep into the crevices also. Here I'm just kind of using my finger to neaten up and tighten the tissue all around. I'm also using some more food coloring here and I'm dunking my tissue right into it to give it a green color. I'm using these tissue a little bit thicker to create a pattern or a textured feel to my birdhouse. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, or you can choose to get creative with it. Here I'm making it look like I'm doing a few flower vines, then I'll go over it with some more paper. Just using my food coloring to kind of spread some more color on there, get it a little bit more saturated. This is kind of like water coloring. It's really fun. You can continue this process until you're satisfied. I'm using a little bit more food coloring on the side of my birdhouse to create a spatter effect similar to flowers in the wild. I'm also going to use a little bit more food coloring on the roof to give it a cooler look. I'm using some water to kind of stretch the color and thin it out. It creates a cool effect that kind of looks like tie-dye. And I'm going to add some glitter glue as well because birds are attracted to shiny things and it'll help let them know that there is a new birdhouse outside that they can feed in. You can go ahead and spread that glitter on there if you have some. You can use your birdhouse as a feeder or as a nesting house. What would you prefer? Here I'm going to continue to repeat the process until I'm completely saturated and completely covered with my paper mache. 
Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and start to cover the top of the bottle. Here I'm placing some tissue paper over the cap just to create the finished touches to the house. You can go and make a chimney if you'd like. Just use some tissue and some glue to attach it to the top and then let it dry. You can get creative in this part. So as you go ahead and add tissue and layers, you can add color as well to create an effect. It'll give you some depth once you're done. If you're too saturated, you can go ahead and place a dry piece of tissue paper over your bottle and you can kind of press into that. You also want to try to dry this in a nice warm space because if it's too cold, it won't dry fast enough. Here I'm using my paintbrush to kind of give that texture a smooth little look once again. And then once I'm done with this process, I'm going to free that hole up again, and then I'm going to go back into the crevices of the bottle and the roof and kind of uh, give that an extra layer of stability and strength as well. So here I'm going to dunk a bigger piece of tissue paper and I'm going to start to strengthen that underside of the roof. Try to get it into the crevices completely as you can and you can use your papers to kind of stick it in to the parts that your fingers may not fit in. You can use the paintbrush with an upward effect to kind of smoothen it out from the back of the roof and the crevices then up and outwards to the front. I'm using a little bit more tissue paper to clean up the roof of my house and just give it a smoother effect. The more layers, the stronger and harder your paper mache will dry. But keep in mind, the more layers, the longer the dry time. Here I'm going to add a little bit more sparkle to my bottle and I'm going to add some more glitter glue. You can use whatever you have on hand to decorate your bottle. The glue will also help to strengthen the tissue paper as it dries. Here I'm placing some more glue in the crevices just to give it an extra layer of strength. I'm also doing it on the underside of the window as well. If you have some pictures you like to cut out, you can also go ahead and cut those out and place those on for decoration as well. If you wanted to add characters, flowers, or even change the look. Now we can go ahead to the roof part where we learn to hang our birdhouses. Here I'm using some yarn and I'm going to wrap my yarn kind of like a shoestring. I'm going to create a bow. So I created a bow and then I split the string into two parts and I used them counterclockwise each string and wrapped them up all together. Make sure at the end once you're done wrapping your string you have an even amount of string left. I just eyeballed the length of my yarn but you can use a measuring tape if you'd like to measure your yarn. Here I'm just doing a cross knotting effect and I'm creating a shoelace type design. I'm going to use some glue to get this a little bit more uh, saturated into my paper mache so that when it dries it'll stay in place. You can get creative with this. You don't have to do a bow design if you don't want to. I'm going to completely saturate my string uh, to the bottle cap all around the circular cap. Being sure to leave the even strings so that way we can hang them. Once you've gotten your design in and you saturated it, you can go ahead and tie the two ends of your string together. I'm going to wrap mine a little bit more just to create some more strength as once the weight of the paper mache has dried, it will increase. So I'm just wrapping my string together and creating a knot effect under, over, 
under over on both sides, wrapping them into oneself. Once I have that, I can go ahead and continue wrapping all the way up. This will give me a little loop that I can hang from any tree branch or a nail. If you know how to braid, you can use a braiding technique if you'd like. It's kind of like land yards. And you just make knots as you go until you get a loop at the end. We're almost done. I used a lighter to burn the ends together and just give me a stronger hold. Then I used some glue to reinforce it a bit more. All right, guys, look how far we've come. Now we have a birdhouse. Although it's not done, it's not ready to be hung yet. We have to let it dry and sit so that the paper mache can harden. Temperature matters, so place it in a warm place to dry. Next time, you'll be doing a painting with Mr. Carter or possibly a sculpture, so stay tuned for that one, guys. All right, everybody, let's see. How do we get back stuff here? And we're back. Share screen. Oops. Here we go. We're getting it. Show self view. All right, and we're back. Welcome. Welcome back. So here we have the finished product. This is that beautiful bird house slash bird feeder. Look at the sparkle. Look at the shine, look at the color, all with simple household materials and food coloring, paper towels, string, plastic bottle, and a little bit of, a little bit of fun. So nice and hard, very, very easy to make, very fun. Look how you can sculpt with it. You can do just about anything. So we're gonna continue along this vein. Uh, we're gonna start painting our new bottle that we already prepared in the same way that Lana showed you. We're gonna paint this bottle here. We're gonna paint some flowers, some roses, maybe some interesting creatures, something along that line. So this will be our next project. So if you notice we're using a glass bottle, you can use a glass bottle, plastic bottle, any, any kind of bottle, anything you can imagine, and just wrap it using your glue and water mixture with the paper towel. Then you'll be able, once it dries, it'll harden and it'll act just like a canvas. So this is a, a fun and easy way to make a, a sculptural canvas, essentially. So now we can paint on this just like how we would if it was a piece of pottery. And we can do that using our ink, our ink paint, I should say, or we can uh, use a, a few other methods that I'll show you right now. So one of those methods is to take your ink, your ink paint and blow it into the bottle, add some either alcohol, you might even be able to use some hand sanitizer if you thin it with a little bit of water. Um, but if you have rubbing alcohol, it'll thin that ink uh, really nicely, better than water. Water um, doesn't quite interact with it as well. But you can also use a little bit of uh, food coloring and water, and that'll work just as well. Um, so look in your local grocery store, 99 cent store for that. Here we have a little spray bottle that we got from the 99 cent store. Everything will be from there or home. So we have a little spray bottle. We did our mixture. Now we're gonna test it out. All right, works good. Has a nice cool, cool effect. So I'm gonna do that along the background here. And then I'm gonna see if I can do it making a blue mixture. So I'll show you how to make the blue next. So let me hold this up. 
Let's spray around here, spray around the bottom. All right, and when that dries, we can, we can even start to wipe it off here now. Let me get my little paper towel. And wipe that down. It won't really stick to the glass. The paint won't stick to the glass. Um, once it dries, you can just scrape it off. Um, but what it will stick to is our hardened uh, paper mache surface. And it's already nice and white, so you don't even have to prime it. Uh, another interesting way <clears throat> thing you could do is while you are adding, making your glue mixture, you can add some food coloring to it and dye your uh, paper mache material as you're adding it to your bottle. But for now, we're gonna leave it white and we're gonna paint it. So we have a nice cool spray, almost airbrush effect with our spray bottle. Um, I'm gonna show you guys how to mix up another batch. And so we have some food coloring here. You only need a little bit, just that much, just a few drops. More won't hurt you. And let's add some more water. Where did my water go? Here we go. This is some nice paint water here. Only the best. All right. Now we swap lids. Mm, look at that nice blue. Let's see how it looks on the white. So now I'm going to start spraying the top. Oops, still some green in there. Got to work out the green until we get to the blue. If you turn it sideways, it has a different spray effect. And you can even, if you edge up like this, you can have, you can control where it sprays a little bit more. Nice. All right. So we're kind of creating an atmosphere with that spray bottle. I feel like doing a little bit of yellow in that middle area now. So let's see here. I'm going to take my yellow. I actually have a little bit of yellow paint laying around and hopefully you guys have some paint as well. But I just feel like the middle is really calling for that yellow color. So that's what I'm going to do. Do some yellow starting from here. Oh, wait, you guys see that? There. So I'm going to spread it around. Do it on this side too. Up here, blend it in a little bit. If you don't have uh, yellow paint, you can use yellow food coloring. Let's try it with that. And I'm just going to apply it straight on. Just like that. Just let it run. It looks orange right now, but once you add a little bit of water, this brush is a little dirty. Once you add a little bit of water, it'll start to come alive. So. Spread that out. It's looking a little funky right now, but we'll, we'll tie it all together. All right. That food coloring wasn't doing it for me. So now I'm just blending these colors with my brush. And you know, you could do anything that you can imagine. I'm gonna turn this into a field of flowers. How, how are we doing on time here? We on time? 425. All right. So I'm just gonna blend it into more all over here. 
if I had another bottle, I probably would have sprayed the yellow. So maybe get multiple spray bottles. Just a lesson. A little more yellow. All right, now I'm gonna start painting some flowers on here. Get that off of there. Making sure you guys can see all this. So, you know, hang tight with us as we learn the ropes of online art teaching. We're having fun, I hope you guys are too. Uh, I hope you keep coming back and learning new ways to invent and have fun um, using things at home. And uh, I hope we can all make the most of these times at home and uh, stay safe, make good food, all that. All right, so what's next? I'm gonna take some red, I need some red. So I'm gonna use this red food color in here. And with my red, I'm just gonna start putting on some flowers here. I'm gonna see if I can't do it in front of the camera for you all here. It might drip down a little bit. Look at how that red just goes. Mm, that looks cool. These will be something, I'll turn them into something. We're gonna get a little expressionistic here. It's gonna be some red flowers. Let's get uh, another kind of flower in there. We need maybe a little pink. Hopefully this works. Yeah. I have a pink paint marker here as well. And if you have paint markers, you can open these up also and paint with them with your brush. But for now, we're gonna try and make some pink flowers on here. Oh no, it's coming. Almost out of pink. Let's use some of our ink paints. We have a fresh new one here. This one is like kind of a hot pink color. It's not the gel ink, but it's close. Let's try the gel ink too. Nice and bright. All right, and if you have some handy pliers laying around, just pull off that little tip there. And dab it on. If it doesn't come out, you have to blow a little bit. There we go. Now it really comes out. And the little bit goes a long way. A little bit goes a long way. I'm just gonna wrap all the way around it. Tell me why I always read, I think of cherries. Uh, blend this a little bit. I'll use my paper towel, wet it a little bit, and start to blend. Sorry, I know it's not the best view, but you can just kind of get an idea of what's going on. But look at those colors. Let me do it this way. So I just have, see this? red here, the dark, dark red. That's really kind of a pink. And I'm just blotting it around with my paper towel. And I'm just kind of creating a little ring of ring of roses, ring of rosy. All the way around. Kind of a 
fitting little Easter time project. Happen to find this bottle. It's looking really nice, I think. In this paper towel, you're kind of blending these colors. These are really, I think, kind of East, good Easter colors. Get a better shot of those colors there. Now we can go in and be a little more specific, I think. How are we doing on time? Are we good? All right. Well, we're live, so we're still going. All right. Ooh. So this is my favorite whiteout pen. Oh, one minute left. This is the, the blue whiteout pen that I was talking about, the Presto. These are the best, best things ever. So with my whiteout pen, I'm gonna do a little drawing. And I'll have to get it going a little bit. There you go, I gotta warm it up. And hopefully you guys can see it coming out there. Nice. So just gonna go around. Add a little highlight and I'm gonna blend it around so that it looks like it's glowing. All right, it has kind of a glowing edge effect. Now I'm just gonna take my white out and go around and make little white highlights for the flowers. All right, so well, I hope you guys had fun on this edition of Anthony Carter's art class uh, at, here on JCAL. Uh, hope you join us for more. Check out all the other teachers. A lot of great content, a lot of great stuff to do during this quarantine. So let's all have some fun, make some great art and make some memories. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining and have a great day, great night.